Hi friends, I recently published a video about Diva cucumbers and I saw so many comments about pollination. Apparently, there is some confusion about how it works, whether it is needed or not, what difference it makes, etc. So, I wanted to provide some quick information that I know. I am not going too deep. My goal is to explain what really matters in terms of indoor gardening. This might be a boring topic, however, it might be helpful for a few. Let's get into the topic. To keep things a little easier, I am categorizing this whole thing into four buckets. Number one, no pollination. Number two, self pollination. Number three, self pollination with intervention. Number four, cross pollination. Let's get into the details starting with no pollination. No pollination means the flowers doesn't require fertilization for fruiting, thus no pollination is required. This concept is called parthenocarpy. Here is the definition of it. The development of fruit without prior fertilization. Going little deep and reading Wikipedia, Parthenocarpy is the natural or artificially induced production of fruit without fertilization, which makes the fruit seedless. A couple of cucumber varieties such as Diva, Iznik, Beard Alpha, Muncher comes in this category. This is the reason I never tried to pollinate my Diva cucumbers. I also have grown Muncher and Beard Alpha cucumbers in the past and I never pollinated them. I still got cucumbers, so the productivity issue is not related to the pollination. There may be many reasons like nutrition, bowl size, insufficient light or something else. Looking at this Diva cucumber plant, it produced nearly 100 flowers over the period and only two of them are male flowers that opened for just one day. How can I even pollinate all these female flowers? Now the question is, can we still pollinate and what happens? Yes, we can still pollinate. The only difference is going to be the cucumber will develop seeds if it is fertilized. Otherwise, it ended up with no seeds at all or the seeds will never get matured to produce next generation. This is the same concept used in commercial production nowadays. But unfortunately, they induce it artificially to produce seedless watermelons, seedless grapes, seedless oranges, etc. This is a bad idea in my personal opinion and I try to avoid consuming such fruits. That is all about parthenocarpy, also known as no pollination. Now let's talk about self pollination. Some plant varieties such as tomato, pepper, eggplants, etc. They produce flowers that have both male and female parts. As the flowers start to open, the pollen will be transferred and fertilization happen. I call this is pure self-pollination. Cherry tomato varieties is the perfect example in this category. I have grown 10 different cherry varieties so far and I never did anything to help with pollination. Now let's talk about self-pollination with manual intervention. Few tomato varieties, pretty much all pepper and eggplant varieties come in this category. Even though they have both male and female parts in each flower, the pollen won't be transferred well enough as they open. So we have to manually tap the flowers or shake the plants gently to help transferring the pollen well enough. The last and fourth category is cross-pollination. In this process, we need to transfer the pollen from one flower to another flower. For example, zucchini plant produce male and female flowers separately. To fertilize and produce the fruit, we must transfer the pollen from male flower to female flower. Of course, with so much research and technology in recent days, I am seeing some parthenocorpic zucchini varieties as well. In this cross-pollination category, sometimes we need to go even further and transfer the pollen from the flowers from another plant. 
This is out of scope for our indoor gardening, so I will skip it. That is pretty much about pollination. Hope it helps. Please let me know if I miss anything or any of my explanation doesn't make sense. Thanks for listening and happy gardening.